it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and I'm back with another layout to share for Paper Maze and I'm working with Photo Play's Sweet as Honey collection again. So this is one of their Tulla and Norbert collections so it's um, a really cute collection, lots of florals and bees and gnomes. Um, I'm not really big on gnomes so I don't really tend to use a lot of them but um, everything else in this collection is absolutely stunning. And this pattern paper you see here is called Sweet Pollen and it's probably my favorite in the collection. So I used um, a lot of it for my first layout earlier in the month. So I didn't have a full 12 by 12 sheet left, but I did want to make a giant rosette to sit on the back of my layout. Um, and at the point of making it, I was already umming and ahhing whether I had enough paper to make it work. Um, but I thought I would give it a go, um, and as I'd predicted, I, it's not quite enough to make the full circle. Um, but that's fine, I find a way around that. So what I do have here is, um, I've cut it into two strips, what I had left. So it's 12 inches wide, but it's only four and a half inches deep, or just under four and a half inches deep. Um, so I'm currently using a um, kind of scoring blade in my trimmer and I'm scoring every quarter of an inch at the whole way along both of these pieces. Um, I'm not going to make you watch all of it but it's just literally every quarter of an inch I'm scoring a line. If you don't have a blade or a scoring blade this is really easily done um, with kind of like a blunt tool or something. You can use it in your trimmer and instead of using the blade, just use a tool. I have been known in the past to use a cake icing tool um, and just digging it down the groove of my trimmer. And that works just as well. So now I've done all my scoring, um, I need to do my folding. So I'm making a fan or a Constantina fold, um, folding in one direction and then back on itself in the other direction. And I do the same for both bits and then I'm going to glue them together to make one long continuous bit. Now, if I wanted to have um, a full circle large rosette, I really needed the third strip. So I would have cut the 12 by 12 sheet into three sections that were all four and a half or four inches wide it would have been, um, but I didn't have enough left. So um, this is all I had, and I do try my hardest to force it round into a circle, but it, it's just not long enough, it doesn't work and it actually ends up tearing one of the scores where I've scored quite deeply. Um, it's just torn, so uh, I do try my hardest and I thought maybe once I'd stuck it together um, and tried to fold it down like that, it might have worked, but it, it didn't. As you can see, it's ripped. So I end up just ripping it all the way down, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and I'm gonna make as much of a circle with it as I possibly can. And the section that um, where it doesn't quite meet, I'm going to use my photo and some embellishments to cover that section. So it kind of has the appearance of being a full rosette, but um, it's not quite. So because I've got that round or secret, almost round shape on the back of my layout, I wanted to have a circular photo as well. So I've got a set of circle nesting dies. Now, my manual die cutting machine is tiny. I think it's only about three and a half inches wide. Um, so the cutting plates aren't very wide at all. And the largest circle die does not fit in the machine. Um, so I do often use it, but just not in the machine. So I've used it to draw the circle around my photo and then I just manually cut that out with my scissors. And I'm gonna now attempt to get this rosette stuck in as much of a circle as I can. So I've punched a circle out just for some white cardstock, applied some quick drying tacky glue. This stuff dries really quickly, so it's perfect for this. I really couldn't be bothered to get the glue gun out just for one bit. Um, so this glue works great, and I'm just holding it in place on top, um, just waiting for that glue to dry enough that it keeps it held. And then once I'm happy that that's going to hold, I can let go of it. Um, and I'm going to apply some double-sided tape to the back just to make sure it doesn't all kind of ping off that circle. And I absolutely love the B side of this paper as well, that black and, what, uh, black and yellow stripe, sorry, it's absolutely stunning. Would have made a fantastic rosette itself, but I really did like the floral side. So I did think about using this um, kind of mustard yellow basil cardstock, that's from the matchmaker pack. Um, 
and it really does match the papers really well. There's some dark yellow flowers on that rosette that would have worked perfectly, but I just felt it was a step too far for me. Um, I loved how the black and yellows popped on the white, so I went back to the white basil, and this is Avalanche, it's also in the um, Matchmaker cardstock pack that you'll find on the website. So I wanted to have some embellishments, some flower embellishments for this layout, but I didn't really have any that suited. So I went back to my one of my previous DT packs, which was the Vicky Booting Colour Study, um, and there was that paper, that 12 by 12 paper that has these yellow and black flowers on it and they were perfect. So I took some time off camera to fussy cut a load of those out. I've also cut a couple of B cut files, they're by Pear Tree Cut Files. I think that cut file was called Buzzing Along and it's, um, it's one of the first releases, so it's from August 2020. Um, but I'm cutting out a couple of those and I'm going to back the bodies with one of the pattern papers from the collection. So this one is called Buzzing By, um, and the B side has got a yellow hexagon, like almost honeycomb pattern on it. So they were the perfect color for my B bodies. So I'm gonna back those with that and just use those as embellishments. You can also see just at the top of the screen there, I've pulled out a couple of my Bramble Fox perspectives. So I'm gonna use that as my title. It says, Be Yourself, gorgeous black acrylic piece. And it comes with the cutest little black etched B as well with little stripes etched into it and it's gorgeous. So they worked really well with this collection as well. So I'm gonna use that as my title and then that little B to embellish as well. So now I need to get a bit creative with that right hand side of my rosette and create myself some embellishment or a way to fill that gap that's been left empty. So I'm going to make myself a tag. I'm using one of the old Simple Stories tags uh, from the Christmas collection uh, just as a template because I really can't draw tags. I can't get the corners symmetrical at all. Um, I just can't do it. <laughs> so I always uh, keep a tag on hand and use that to draw around as a template. And then I've got a, um, a hole reinforcer punch. That's by We Are Memory Keepers. I'm just punching myself um, a reinforcer in a contrasting colour from one of the pattern papers. In fact, that's from the black cardstock that comes in the matchmaker pack. Um, and I'm just going to have a tag. And I originally have it peeking out on the right hand side there. And I'm going to thread some ribbon through and then staple that in place just for a bit more added texture to the page. But I do end up moving that tag. It doesn't stay on the right hand side in the end. Um, but I'll have a little play with it there and that's where I'd, I'd planned to have it when I cut it. Um, but you know what it's like, the best made plans do get changed as you go along. So I'm still trying to figure out a way to fill that, that gap. Um, I know I want to have my title there because it's black and my, my rosette is mainly black. I need to have it on that right hand side there hanging off into that white space so that you can read what it says. Um, but I felt like it needed something behind it. So at the moment I've stuck one of those flowers there, but that's not gonna stay. I really don't like that. It looks too busy under that title. <coughs> Excuse me, so that will get moved. Um, just going back to embellishing. This is the cut apart sheet in the collection. It's called um, You're a Keeper. And on one side it's black with a really um, kind of fine white polka dot but the cut apart side's got loads of different bits on it. So I'm just gonna take some time to fussy cut a couple of bits out of that to embellish with. So I've got these little, um, I think they're meant to be bird houses with some flowers and it's the kind of perfect shape to sit on the left hand side of my photo there. Um, and I'm also gonna cut a bee out, this gorgeous little bee here with its little sign that says be happy. And I'm gonna cut that out to stick it on the left as well. So I feel that that's the left hand side taken care of, it's getting quite busy over there. So now I need to go back to working on that right hand side. And you can see I've just moved that tag up to the top and I'm a lot happier with it there, um, with the ribbon going vertically instead of horizontally and just much happier. And now I've decided that I want to add a little bit of mixed media um, around the edge of my rosette. So I've drawn a faint pencil line just underneath the edge of the circle and I'm using a Distress Ink, this is Mustard Seed, I think this one's called, um, and a blending brush, and I'm just going all around that pencil mark, 
just rubbing in a circular motion to get some ink. Um, it's quite a blended look, so it doesn't look too obvious. It hasn't got like stark lines all around it. Um, it kind of just looks like it's fading out into the, the background of the layout, which is the look I was going for. So I just take some time to go all the way around the edge and then I'm gonna add some splatters on top of that. Just bringing everything back in just to check that I'm happy with it. Um, I think I decide I want a little bit more of the mixed media over the right, yeah, so I'm just drawing that pencil line again and I'm gonna extend that yellow out a bit so it can be seen in the gap just behind my title. So I love how that's looking, but I want a bit more. You know what it's like with mixed media, you get started um, and sometimes it's really hard to stop. But I wanted some splatters as well. So I'm using the same Distress Ink, which is mustard seed. And I've just added a bit to some packaging, added a bit of water, and just with a paintbrush, I'm adding the splatters all the way around. And I'm using quite a, a narrow, fine paintbrush for this. I don't want huge, big, dramatic splatters. I just wanted something kind of small and subtle. So I go around the edge, I dry off the excess with a paper towel and I find sometimes with basil cardstock the inks kind of bleed if they're left sat on top too long and I haven't put any gesso on this background so I always go over with a paper towel just to get the excess off. And now I'm doing exactly the same thing with a metallic gold acrylic paint, just felt like this layout needed some gold, all the yellows and blacks, it was just kind of screaming for a bit of gold. So I've added that. And then thirdly, I'm gonna come in and do exactly the same thing, but with a black acrylic paint. Now this dries, because I soak the excess up, this dries almost more of a gray color than black, but that's fine with me because my photo has got a lot of gray in it. Um, and my little bumblebee from Bramble Fox has, where it's, the details are etched, it looks um, more gray in the middle as well. So that's perfect, it ties in all together nicely. Um, and in a minute, I'm gonna pull out a bit from the ephemera pack that's gray as well. So I don't mind that it's come out more gray than black. It still works fine for me. So now I'm happy with my mixed media, I can go ahead and get everything stuck down. So I'm gonna apply loads of this tacky, fast, grow fast growing, <laughs> fast drying glue to the middle there. Um, and that should help my rosette hold. Um, because obviously it's kind of like got peaks and mountains or valleys and mountains, whatever they're called. Um, there's not a large surface area for the glue to stick to. So I've added loads and loads of glue in kind of a spiral pattern, um, hoping that that will hold. And then I'm just getting my tag stuck in place. And because my photo is gonna sit on top of that, and that tag is raised up on the rosette, so it's like almost a quarter of an inch off the page. Um, I've added some foam behind that photo, just on the right hand side there, to just keep it as one flat piece. And then I'm just using the same quick drying tacky glue just to get everything else stuck into place. I'm going to raise some of the florals up on foam pads, especially the ones that are sort of stuck to the background. I do like to have a lot of dimension, so quite often you'll find I add foam pads behind things rather than sticking them down flat. But because the rosette itself is quite dimensional, anything I'm sticking on that, I'm sticking down flat. And then I've got my little bumblebee cut file from Pear Tree. I've added some foam behind those as well. I didn't want those to get lost by sticking them on the rosette, so I've stuck them on the outside edge on the white so that they're a bit more noticeable, kind of gives the page a diagonal design. And then I'm using glossy accents to stick my um, acrylic perspectives down because I find that holds really well. Now with the title, I've only stuck the left-hand side of it down. <laughs> it's a bit risky, but because it's sat on top of the rosette, it's, um, it's raised off my background quite a lot. So uh, there's no point putting the glue behind the right-hand side because that's not actually stuck to anything. And I didn't want to faff about cutting black foam into really tiny strips, so glossy accents holds really well so I'm, I'm quietly confident that that will stay in place um, we'll see in a year's time when I pull the layout out and um, of my album and it's floating or sunk down to the bottom of the page protector um, but for now it's stuck so I'm happy we've pulled out the ephemera pack here 
This is cardstock ephemera and I think there's 26 pieces in this pack if I remember rightly. So I've pulled out a banner at the bottom there, it's grey with black writing and it says you are my sugar pie honey bunch which I thought was really cute so I really used that. Um, and again it's grey and white so it ties in nicely with my photograph and those splatters that have almost dried grey. And they've also fussy cut a bumblebee um, from a round piece of ephemera and stuck that underneath. And that's my layout for finished today so thank you very much for joining me I'll pop details in the description box below of the um, products I've used and a link to the collection on the store and also a link to the paper maze blog so if you want to um, have a read about anything or visit the blog for other design team members blogs um, the link will be in the bottom but for now thanks very much and I shall see you next time